What is going on guys, it's Bruin Steel here and welcome back to another WWE broadcast and we are here to do our Bash in Berlin um, predictions, so prediction video for Bash in Berlin, uh, we are at another pay-per-view, not as exciting as the previous ones we did, but I am joined by Canadian Yorker, how's it going tonight? Doing great today, um, you know, it's been a long day. Can't you know? Just happy to be getting into the Bash in Berlin. Let's get it. Let's get it done. Yep. All right. So Bash in Berlin, by the way, guys, letting you guys know, is this Saturday. I'm not sure what time is it since there's a time zone or a time difference. I'm not sure what time it will be. Hopefully, it's like hopefully it's gonna be in the afternoon during our time. So we have to see what happens. So. Um, yeah, let's get to the predictions and how basically this will work is basically how we always been doing our prediction video for pay-per-views is basically um, Canadian Yorker will give his predictions first, which will lead to me giving my predictions last. So Canadian Yorker will make his predictions and then I will make my predictions. So let's get started. There are five matches at Bash in Berlin, so I'm just going to go down the line. You know, I should, I should, I should save the best for the end, but I'm just gonna go down to the line, down the line. So let's, uh, let's start off strong here. Let's start off big. We got the singles match for the World Heavyweight Championship. So we got Gunther defending the World Heavyweight. We got Gunther defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Randy Orton. So basically, this match was came to be. It was eventually was supposed to be booked. Because of what happened at the King of the Ring uh, pay-per-view of Gunther beating Randy Orton to become King of the Ring. Where Randy Orton said that he didn't really... There was some, like, you know, people talking about how Randy Orton's shoulder wasn't down or something like that. Or up or something like that. So, Triple H said that in the future, there's going to be a rematch. And now here we are, Gunther and Randy Orton for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, basically, if Orton wins somehow, he will be transferred to Raw Gunther will be transferred to SmackDown. So that's going to be big if that happens. Mm -hmm. So um, singles match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Gunther, Randy Orton, Canadian Yorker, I'm giving you the floor. What are your thoughts on this match? And who do you think is going to win? Wow. Um, that's a pretty big, a pretty big switch. Um, not only whoever wins, whoever, whoever, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm, did I hear that right? It's only, wins, it's only he... if only if Orton wins. So if Gunther retains, Randy stays on SmackDown. Gunther stays on Raw. It's only if Orton wins. So if Orton wins, he gets transferred to Raw. Gunther will, will be transferred to SmackDown. I think the whole reason is because of the brand split. Because the world title belongs on Raw. Undisputed is on SmackDown. That's the whole reason. Um, I, man, I would, it would be awesome to see Randy Orton get world heavyweight championship uh back and um you know i think he was the youngest what was he the youngest ever world heavyweight champion uh 20 years ago um for him to win it uh right at the edge of his career when he is nearing 40 50 years old and i mean he's going to be he's going to be in the wrestling he's going to be in wwe for the next five years i believe he signed a contract um I mean, for him to win would be a, a, a big success for him because he hasn't won a World Heavyweight Championship in such a long time. However, he is wrestling Gunther, and uh, this is a, this is a toss-up between Gunther and Randy Orton, much like it was between Damian Priest and Gunther. Um, Damian Priest was definitely giving Gunther a lot of problems because he's a striker. He kicked him. He was giving him a lot of problems, and if not for, uh, you know, for what happened, you know, Damian Priest would be the champion right now, but that's not the case. But Gunther is in his first title defense against Randy Orton, and, you know, Gunther likes to, to attack his opponent's weaknesses, and um, I believe Gunther knows that Randy has weak knees, and Gunther is definitely going to be targeting Randy's knees um, to try to take him out. Um, this is going to be a tough one. I mean, if Randy, if Randy definitely pulls it off, it will be amazing. 
and Randy will be transferred to Raw. And I believe Raw is where Randy has shined the most. Um, SmackDown is kind of Cody Rhodes territory. But I think that Gunther is going to be the one that's going to beat Randy Orton in this in the second time around clean without any help whatsoever because it was kind of controversial the first time. Um, but man, I mean, I do believe Randy Orton can can pull off an upset. He's definitely known for pulling off upsets. He can do it. Um, I would I would not underestimate Randy Orton, but I'm gonna have to give this to Randy Orton because. This is Gunther's first title defense, and I don't see Gunther losing his first title defense. You mean you're giving it to Gunther, That's... right? Uh, I'm going to have to give the edge to Gunther, yes. Oh, you said give it to Randy Orton. I was confused if you were risking it. Um... But I said, I, said, I said Randy Orton has the potential to beat, definitely has the potential to beat yeah. Gunther. He can so, do it. So you're, but locking, it's... Um, so you're locking your pick in Gunther over Randy Orton? I'm locking in Gunther, yes. See, here's the thing, though. At first, I all right. So your Canadian Yorker picked Gunther over Randy Orton. Um, I wouldn't say that's a risky pick. I think that's everyone's prediction. But here's the thing, though. I honestly think that it could go either way. Um, not necessary. I didn't really know that there was gonna be like a, you know, it made sense if Randy did win, he would go to Raw because Raw of the championship brand split. But honestly, you know, it honestly could have, it it could gone either way to be honest um because i could feel like um because i could feel like if randy wins um we're all talking about john cena his last run in the wwe um he's gonna face off against um possibly someone at wrestlemania i could see like i said people are debating if oh randy orton might be the guy that john cena faces last at wrestlemania and john cena's last wrestlemania his last opponent at WrestleMania could be Randy Orton. And I'm saying like, oh, what if it's John Cena that wins the World Rumble and then John Cena challenges Randy Orton. If Randy Orton wins, he could hold on to the title till WrestleMania where John Cena wins the World Rumble, challenges Randy Orton and setting up that final match at WrestleMania. Um, but I'm thinking eh, it could happen with Gunther. Gunther could just hold on to the title until WrestleMania. John Cena can win the World Rumble. We can get a hell of a matchup between Gunther and John Cena, but people are expecting that John Cena is probably not going to face either. They might, he might just go after Braun Breaker. But the thing is, I just don't see Randy Orton winning now because of the whole transfer. I don't think Orton's going to go to Raw. I just feel like they're building up that rivalry with um, Randy Orton um, and Gunther, and I feel like the big story is Orton is going to turn on Cody Rhodes down the world so in order for that to happen Randy Orton would have to be on Smackdown so I still believe that Randy Orton once he's done with Gunther because Randy Orton took a lot of losses and I feel like Randy Orton is going to be pissed off I feel like I feel like he could just stay on Smackdown and start a feud with Cody Rhodes just Randy Orton could possibly in the future or maybe down the road just turn on um Cody Rhodes we will talk about the whole Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes situation, which I have something I want to say, but Randy Orton, I feel like down the road will turn on Cody Rhodes. So in order for that to happen, Randy should stay on SmackDown. Um, plus, Gunther will kind of need a push with the world title. I feel like it's just too early for Gunther to drop the title. Plus, there might be some other legitimate, um, you know, person that can dethrone Gunther. Um, Chad Gable, we talked about him. Talk, he, we talked about how he said he's going after a world title after failing to get the IC title. Um, we could see Chad Gable defrauding Gunther um, for the world title, maybe. I don't know. But we have to see what happens. But for now, I just feel like Gunther ain't going to drop the title this early. Um, so, And then the whole situation with the Randy Orton and Cody storyline, I feel like Gunther is going to win. Um, it could be by submission. It could be cleanly by pitfall. I'm not sure. Um, but I feel like it's going to be a clean win. I think this is going to be the only rivalry that Gunther and Randy Orton have. This is going to decide the whole thing. So I think Gunther comes away with the win, retaining the World Heavyweight Championship. So I'm lucky in my picking. I am picking Gunther to beat Randy Orton to retain the world title. All right. Yeah. All right, so me and Canadian York, me and Canadian Yorker has chosen Gunther 
Um, so that's no big deal. Um, so hopefully that's not a risky pick. I don't think it is, but all right, moving down the line, I'm going to save the, probably the main event of this, um, pay-per-view for last. Um, I may be wrong. I might be right, but let's go to the next match. That's not so exciting. Maybe. All right. So I am moving on to the next match, which is, which these are random by the way now, because I want to save the best for last. We got a tag team match for the WWE Women's Tag Team uh, Championship. We got the un we got the unholy union of Elba Fire and Ezra Dawn defending their titles against Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Um, so pretty much a rematch from last time. Last time, um, Blair Davenport got involved, so it ended up in a disqualification um, win um, for Bianca and Jade. So obviously Triple H could, could be or uh, Nick Aldis could have. Definitely, it made sense giving them a rematch. So now we are tag team match for the women's tag team championship: Bianca and Jade versus Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Um, this is their last chance to get the titles back, Jade and um, Bianca. That's what I have to say. But I'm giving you the floor, Canadian Yorker. What are your thoughts and what is your final prediction? Who do you think is gonna win? I, I, I understand that this this might be their last chance to get the win, to get their titles back, and they could definitely very well get their titles back if there's no outside interference that comes in the in the way and, and interferes in the match and costs them the the, the chance to win. Um, there's definitely a lot at stake riding for J Bianca and Jade. Uh, they definitely have the uh, they got they got it. They could definitely beat Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Um but at the same time um, they could definitely beat them for the championship. Isla Dawn and Fire um, man it is kind of tough but I kind of have watched some of their matches and I noticed that well they are that, despite the fact that they might they might cheat to win they, they probably are going to cheat to win they're gonna cheat to win. That's gonna happen in this match, and uh, they're they're gonna win because they cheated. Um, but here's the thing, though. Um, I think that, that that Jade and Bianca can get it done at um, at at at, at Bastion Berlin. They can definitely get it done, um, or else this is it for them. So this is kind of tough. If 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 Jade and Bianca do lose, there could be a possibility that in the future we could see some sort of issue going on between them. They could end up losing, but I think that they could get help. They could get outside help too. You know, I I think that um, I'm gonna have to go with Jade and Bianca to get their titles back at at Bastion Berlin. I'm I'm locking that picking. All because right, because so they, picking, they, they have so my you're own locking honor. in Bianca and Jade? I'm locking in Bianca and Jade. Yeah. All right. So I'm not going to lie. This was a toughie for me. Um, So this is what I feel. So look, I said this before. I said I will say this for like the hundredth time. I know, I know. I said it a hundred times. You probably are said that. Oh, yeah, you already said it. The unholy union needs a push. Like they need a push. Like they didn't do anything when they were on SmackDown. And ever since they came to Raw, they didn't do shit. And then right now, I mean, I give them credit where it's due, the Unholy Union. they actually defending the titles. They actually defended the titles in a triple threat match, um, which they successfully defended, and they actually won. So I give credit where it's due, but I just wasn't a fan of that match against Bianca and Jade where Blair Davenport got involved. Like, if the Unholy Union beaten, had beaten Bianca and Jade cleanly that will probably be their best win or their biggest win or their biggest push like that could happen um except their weak defense on nxt i don't really count their first defense that happened on nxt irrelevant so um the triple threat was basically their only great defense but if they can manage to beat bianca and jade here cleanly I i'll be impressed like this is probably i mean that's exactly i'll be happy for them it's like exactly what i've been saying throughout the months um, Elba Fire and Isla Dawn definitely need a push, um, but in terms of the holding on to the title, it's like, at this point, they're like, what are you doing with the title? You're not defending it a lot, but now it's, they're defending it a bit, you know, I think they're getting there, 
But the thing is, like, Bianca and Jade, I feel like they're a great team and all, but my only issue with Bianca and Jade winning is, like, I feel like some time down the road, Bianca is going to turn heel. I think Bianca's due for a heel turn. Um, I just feel like for that to happen, I feel like I just don't see Bianca and Jade um, winning the titles back. That was just ruined the storyline. I mean, people are saying um, it's not going to happen. Bianca's just going to stay a face. People are saying that, yeah, Bianca's going to do for a heel turn. Um, but the only issue I have with the heel turn is Bianca and Jade are actually doing well together. They're not getting upset at each other. They're not hinting or teasing a heel turn by Bianca. But the thing is, like, I'm not sure. I, I, have, I have a strange feeling that something's going to go down, down the road and Bianca's going to eventually turn on Jade. Maybe it's Bianca's in, like, an acting pose or something, pretending to be Jade's friend. But you never know. Maybe Bianca's deep down jealous of Jade. And then eventually she will snap and then eventually turn heel. Um, but I just feel like the heel turn could happen. But I say that many times and it hasn't. But I mean, I just feel like... See, I'm taking a risky pick here because I just feel like the Unholy Union deserve a push. I feel like this could be their big win here. But there's so many other competitors that could go after the women's tag team battles. Like, I could see a baby face damage control win the titles off of Elba Fire and Isla Dawn. I could see um, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark probably take the titles. Or maybe Sonya Deville in the mix if she wrestled for the tag team titles. It could be Sonya Deville and Zoe Stark. It could be Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler for the tag team titles. But I just feel like Bianca and Jade, I just don't see them winning the titles back. Call me crazy. I may be, I might be right. I might be wrong. But I just see... On Holly Union getting a clean win here for some reason. I, I feel it coming. So I just feel like that they definitely deserve that push. But also I feel like it's a risky pick. But I'm still going to do it anyways. I am locking my pick in. I am picking the On Holly Union, Elba Fire, and Isla Dawn to beat Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. This is a risky pick because it seems like Bianca and Jade are the better team. Um, but I just feel like because of that heel turn storyline... I just feel like Bianca at some point will show her true colors of her jealousy of Jade Cargill, her jealousy of Jade stealing the spotlight, you know, obviously, because I feel like Jade Cargill is becoming a bigger superstar than Bianca is. So, um, but that's I, what, I, I just feel like that's going to happen. Like at some point, like, don't get me wrong. Like I said about Tiffany, um, like, just like I said about Tiffany's due for a face turn, I just feel like Bianca's due, due for a heel turn. Um, but people are like, the only problem is like, oh, the fans don't want Bianca um, to turn heel because Bianca has a lot of um, fans that look up to her, you know? It just, I don't know, but I, my my um, gut's telling me a heel's coming um, really soon by Bianca. Um, but I'm not sure, but I'm I'm locking in on Holly Union to defeat Bianca and Jade to retain. So um, you were about to say something? Yeah, I was going to say that I, I can say that I, I agree. Um, I do think that Jade Cargill is definitely gaining a lot of steam and people are definitely cheering for her more. Uh, she is quite an amazing athlete. Bianca is an amazing athlete herself, but I think Jade Jade is still up and coming. I think Jade, Jade Cargill and Tiffany Stratton are the next, they're the next um, champions in the WWE. And they're definitely coming up. And, you know, going back to Tiffany Stratton, I think that Nia Jax, probably in the back of her head, she knows that Tiffany Stratton is a, is a, is a threat in the back of her head because she has the money in the bank. Briefcase. She can cash it in on her anytime she wants, you know. So Tiffany Stratton it definitely will definitely cash in on Nia Jax I, sometime in the I, future. I, I, I would... My gut, my gut's saying that Unholy Union is going to retain, but on top of that, it could possibly happen. Bianca and Jade could win the titles, but then they could hold on to the titles until there's a heel turn. You know, all the times that a tag team turn heel is when they actually cost the tag team titles to each other. Like, look at um, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. They won the tag team titles on that Raw that we went to, right? 
And how yes. did they lose their titles? Shayna Baszler turned on Ronda Rousey. So that could happen. I've another pass to a Bianca heel turn is Bianca and Jade winning the match right here, and they can hold on to the title, which will be later on. I mean, hold hold on to the title, and then eventually Bianca will turn on Jade, causing them to lose the tag team title. So that could be a possible pass. Um, we've seen it many times with um tag team teaming up together. We've seen it happen with I believe, was it like I know it was like oh yeah it was. Becky Lynch and um, it was Becky Lynch and Trish or something like that. I think, I think or it was. That. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like Becky Lynch and it wasn't Becky Lynch. And Lynch. Yeah, it was Becky Lynch and Trish. They had the women's tag team titles and Trish turned on Becky, forcing them, causing them to lose the tag team titles. Uh, but I don't want to talk too much about that. But still, I'm taking a pretty risky pick right here. Um, I'm still picking the unholy union. Elba Fire and Isla Dawn to retain. All right, so we picked the opposite right here. You got Bianca and Jade. Yep. I got Isla Fire and Isla Dawn. I might be wrong, so we have to see. Maybe Miracle. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually won by cheating. Like you said, I could see Blair Davenport helping out Elba Fire and Isla Dawn or something like that. And maybe Naomi could come into the mix. We have to see what happens. Um, but moving on to the next match, um, we're going to save the last two, the last two matches last, which I feel is great. Um, you know, which ones those are, um, hopefully, but moving on to the next match, we got a mixed tag team match. We got the terror t twins, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley going up against the judgment day or street trash, whatever. Um, Dirty Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. So we have not actually seen a mixed tag team match in like forever. Like I'm saying forever. Um, so, I mean, I don't even remember the last time we've seen a mixed tag team. I think it was at WrestleMania or something like that. Triple H, Stephanie or something like that. Uh, Kurt Angle, it was like Ronda Rousey or something like that. But uh, mixed tag team match, Damon Priest, Rhea Ripley versus... Dirty Dom and Liv Morgan in a mixed tag team match. So, Canadian Yorker, you have the floor. What are your thoughts and what are your predictions? If I would say if the Judgment Day doesn't get themselves involved in this mixed tag team match, then it will be it will be a wrap for Dominic for for Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Um, <laughs> I, I would say. Uh, if, if, if the Judgment Day does, I believe the Judgment Day is going to get involved in this, in this match. They're going to definitely in, in get involved and try to cause havoc, and and cost and and help um, Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan win. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it's due time that Rhea Ripley and and Damian Priest deserve a win against uh, the Judgment Day. So. Wow, this is kind of tough because, well, Liv Morgan has beaten Rhea Ripley before, so I definitely probably am gonna go with them, the Damian Priest, and wait, yeah, <laughs> this is a tough one because I thought, well, how about the others? Um, this is a tough one. Because so Dominic Mysterio, nobody likes him. Um, let's just let's just say this: Damian Priest can beat Dominic one on one, no question. I believe that. But Rhea Ripley and 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 Liv Morgan, I mean, they faced off against each other more than once. And, and to be honest with you, you know, I don't know if Rhea Ripley. I think Rhea Ripley is one hundred percent. But Rhea Ripley. You know, could definitely lose to to Liv Morgan for sure. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give the edge to Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley in this one because if there's no outside interference, they're definitely going to win, right. That's gonna happen for sure. Um, I'm gonna have to give the edge to Damian and Rhea. All right, so you're locking your pick in. You're picking the Terror yep. Twins of Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Yes, I'm taking the Terror Twins. All right. Um, yeah, like you said, this is a toughie. Um, so for me, this is what I think is going to happen. Obviously, Bad Blood is in October. 
I did feel like there could be some storyline here leading towards uh, Bad Blood. So I just feel like it's going to be, it's 100% going to be Rhea Ripley versus Liv at Bad Blood for the world title, the women's world title. Um, and I can definitely see Damon Priest versus Finn Balor. Um, look, I just feel like Judgment Day could possibly go into Bloodline all, you know, strong and stuff like that. I just feel like uh, Dominic Mysterio and Liv, um, they're definitely going to get help um, from Carlito, Finn Balor, and JJ McDonough. Like, they're going to get involved, Finn Balor. Um, JD McDonough and Carlito. Uh, but the question is the thing is, like, do you think Damon Priest and Rhea Ripley are going to get surprise help? Um, people are talking about how maybe Jay Uso could possibly come out and help. Um, maybe Sammy, um, knowing that they are going after the Judgment Day's titles. Um, but we have to see what happens. But honestly, I just feel like. Um, the best option is because of the storyline. I just feel like, see, Bloodline is going to be their, the final, maybe rivalry feud between the Judgment Day and Rhea and Damon Priest. So I feel like, obviously, the good guys going to have to have the last match. Um, so for now, I think the Judgment Day actually gets help from Finn Balor, Carlito, and JJ McDonough in this one. And surprise or not, I actually think Dominic Mysterio gets the upset and actually pins Damon Priest. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that Liv and Dominic Mysterio gets a huge win over Rhea Ripley and Damon Priest. It's a risky pick, but I just feel like that's the great, the better option going into Bad Blood. Um, you know, you got Damon Priest and Rhea really pissed off and they're looking for redemption. Um, I just feel like because they're, this is their first official match against the Judgment Day, I feel like the bad guys always get the first laugh. The good guys always get the last laugh. Um, so I just feel like with Judgment Day's help, I feel like Dominic Mysterio and Liv will get the win. So I am locking my pick in. Um, I mean, I could be possibly wrong. So, But I am picking Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan to pull out a really, really big win over Damon Priest and Rhea Ripley. Um, so yeah, that would <laughs> do it for my pick. Um I would say this is kind of risky, but I just feel like that's going to happen. Um, I just feel like that's just going to set up the two matches that right here, I mean, at, 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 at bad blood. So Finn Balor versus Damien, Rhea versus Liv. Um, so that would do it. I am picking Dom and Liv. Kenny Yorker, um, you picked Damien Priest and Rhea. <laughs> so. I don't know. I mean, what do you think of my pick so far? Do you what? How do you feel about picking the opposite? I I, I can ask I, you. I can ask you about. I was gonna ask you how you feel about me picking out a fire and as a dawn and something opposite, of picking Dom and Liv. But I I think I think you, you, to be honest with you, I think that Dominic and Liv could definitely win the match. Just like I said, there's, if there's outside interference, the Judgment Day can get involved. The Judgment Day is going to beat down Damian Priest, and the, you know Liv has. Rhea Ripley all to herself, of course. You know, definitely, they can definitely win this match. I mean, they, they can definitely, they're, 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 they have more numbers. They can cause distractions. Yeah, right oh, now, people yeah, are not really loving it. I forgot about that. I wanted what? to say this. I had something else I wanted to mention. All right, people are spectating this. I definitely could see it happen, but we could see, you know, the history. If you all know the history between... Raquel Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley in the past, people are actually yeah. spectating that Raquel Rodriguez is going to return to help Liv Morgan. So people are like, the Judgment Day, they, like they're like they just saying, Liv needs a bodyguard, Dominic Mysterio needs a bodyguard, and who better could, could be that bodyguard who knows Liv so well, who used to be her friend, who now could be, like, who could continue their friendship right here. People are saying that Raquel Rodriguez could come back as a heel and join Judgment Day to be the bodyguard of Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. <laughs> I mean, to be, to be the, body, the bodyguard of Liv Morgan, it's more like it. Yeah, that's Bonus, what I'm saying. I, I can see that happening. I can see that happening for sure. Because... That could, that's what I was thinking about, that Raquel Rodriguez could interfere in helping Dom and Liv win. And Raquel, well, that, that just shows, that could have Raquel get her revenge because we know that Raquel wants revenge. She has... No respect for Rhea Ripley. That rivalry that they had 
Raquel, all she wanted to do was rip Rhea Ripley apart, but that's when she was a baby face against a heel Rhea. Um, but now she's a heel. She can do whatever she wants. She can join a group and she can get her revenge by beating up Rhea Ripley and becoming Liv Morgan's bodyguard. So I can definitely see a heel Raquel Rodriguez coming back. I can see that happening as well. Yeah, so look, Raquel Rodriguez could definitely come back and help Rhea Ripley. And of course, you mean live? You know, there are people. There are people that don't you mean like. Live? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are, there are people that that don't like that don't like that Damian Priest. So we can have people that are allies to help Damian Priest out. Right. You know, yeah. it would it would be crazy. It would be crazy if the bloodline called him the favor for the from the blood. I'm sorry, if the judgment. They call him the favor of the bloodline because remember, Judgment Day and Bloodline have an alliance some sorts of some sorts. I don't know if that's still in effect, but they could know. call them out and help them. You know, right. you never know. All right, let's move on. We got two more matches. This video is getting <laughs> so. Um, all right, moving on to the next match. It's gonna get bloody. Uh, second to laugh. Um, we got a strap match against from. We got a strap match. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. Um, if you guys don't know what a strap match is, is when both opponents are strapped to basically a belt, and then you have to incapacitate your opponent as much as you can until you get the one, two, three. Um, Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre actually competed in one a couple years ago. Um, I believe it was an Extreme Rules match where Karrion Cross won. Um, so basically, I think you have to touch all four corners of the ring or something like that. Um, but you are tied to your opponent by two ends of a belt, and then you just whip your opponent as much as you want until they're incapacitated or can't compete. And then you get the if you get the one to three, you win. So uh, what a way with the CM Punk and Drew McIntyre robbery. But Canadian Yorker, you got the floor. What are your thoughts and what is your prediction? With back and forth between both these guys, we're gonna be giving each other whoopings. Both of them are. Uh, Drew McIntyre is definitely looking for um, to to get his whooping on on uh, on, on on CM Punk because CM Punk has been attacking Drew McIntyre from behind the past these past few Monday Night Raws um, because you know he's just been attacking him from behind what three or four times now. Um, it's gonna be. It's it's gonna be a tough one. Um, Drew McIntyre. Uh, I think that CM Punk might get a win over Drew McIntyre. Uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna have to pick CM Punk for this one. To get the win over Drew McIntyre, um, unless Drew McIntyre pulls off an upset, uh, but I definitely see Drew McIntyre picking up. I'm sorry, CM Punk picking up a win over Drew McIntyre um, in this in this matchup. Yeah. Um. So for me, yeah, I think I agree as well. I just feel like CM Punk. I mean, CM Punk had the last laugh on Drew McIntyre, but the thing is, like, Drew McIntyre won. Beat Drew McIntyre beat CM Punk last time because. Seth Rollins was the guest referee. Um, Drew McIntyre would, I don't think he would say that, CM Punk would say that it was unfair since it wasn't a regular ref. But now you're going to get a, rever, ref, a regular referee right here. I just feel like these two guys hate each other. The feud's been going on. I feel like it's finally going to end. Hopefully it finally, because they actually hate each other so much. Hopefully the Hell and Cell finish their rivalry. You could have... One guy over get traded to SmackDown, so that guarantees the rivalry ends. So I could see like one of those guys heading over to SmackDown. That would keep the two superstars apart if that even works. But um, I just feel like they could do a back and forth. Um, Drew McIntyre won the last meeting, but I feel like they could go neck and neck going into Bad Blood. There's definitely going to be like a Hell in a Cell match between these two guys in the um bad blood so i could definitely see that bad blood but for this match i just feel like cm punk is gonna get the upper hand i feel like it's gonna be a banger i feel like it's gonna be bloody or maybe it just hurts so bad um but i feel like at the end i think i got cm punk so i feel like cm punk can get his redemption 
over Drew McIntyre with the actual referee. <laughs> so um, I'm locking my pick in. I am picking CM Punk to defeat Drew McIntyre in a strap match. All right, so moving on to the possible main event. We got a singles match for the undisputed WWE Championship. Uh, we got Cody Rhodes facing off against his good friend, Kevin Owens. Um, the singles match in this for the undisputed WWE Championship. Um, so this is, tensions are rising right here. Um, but Canadian Yorker, you got the floor. What are your thoughts and what is your prediction? Wow, Cody Rhodes. Uh, this is Cody Rhodes' second title defense. Um, or maybe Cody Rhodes has it. It was like third or something or fourth. Or yes, sixth. yes. So this is Cody Rhodes' third title defense against Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. This is Kevin Owens' big opportunity to get his a WWE Championship uh, belt. Um, Kevin Owens could definitely win against Cody Rhodes, and you know, it would make it interesting if Cody Rhodes gets the win because but I don't think that's going to happen because um, I don't think Kevin Owens is going to win against Cody Rhodes because Cody Rhodes needs to hold on to the title for uh, Solo Sokoa. Cody Rhodes needs to hold on to the title for the, uh, the Rock, who might be coming back sometime in the future. However, I, I don't think... I think Solo has to deal with the, with the issues going on with the bloodline right now, and he's got a lot on his plate. Um, Kevin Owens can definitely. We have been just just discussing about Kevin Owens turning heel on Cody Rhodes, and um, I see that could be a very much be a big like a big possibility that could happen. Um, I think that Kevin Owens is probably not going to win this one. He's not going to win against against Cody Rhodes. But if he does, it will be a big upset if he does. So I think that Cody Rhodes is probably going to be taking this match and uh, retaining his championship against Kevin Owens. I think that's gonna that's happening this Saturday. All right, so you're locking your pick in Cody Rhodes, right? Yes. All right, so, um, all right, tensions are high. So this is what I feel is going to happen. Uh, said it before, said it multiple times. Kevin Owens, after the match, is turning on Cody Rhodes. That's just what it is. So we've seen a tease. We've seen um, Kevin Owens teasing a heel turn. Cody Rhodes could possibly see it coming. But no doubt about it, Kevin Owens is going to turn heel on Cody Rhodes after the match. And yeah, I agree. I feel like Cody Rhodes... He needs to hold on to the title because obviously he promised The Rock that he will face The Rock later in the future for the title. So I don't see him dropping it. Um, but this will definitely lead maybe a match, a rematch between Cody and Kevin in the future, possibly at Bad Blood. Um, so basically, I just feel like Cody Rhodes, he could possibly start a feud with Randy Orton if Randy Orton does turn, um, if Randy Orton does turn heel. So there are spectating that saying that Kevin Owens and Randy Orton might just both turn heel on Cody and then they do like a tag team faction, kind of like Grayson Waller and Austin Siri. Um, but yeah, um, I'm locking my pick in. I am picking Cody Rhodes to defeat Kevin Owens. I just don't see Kevin Owens winning because of the whole Rock storyline, the Bloodline storyline. On top of that, Kevin Owens is going to turn heel. That's my prediction as well after the match. Um, Kevin Owens is definitely going to turn heel. Um, it's definitely going to be on Cody Rhodes. Um, but if Kevin Owens doesn't turn heel, I'll be definitely surprised. Um, but we have to see what happens. Um, you never know. Kevin Owens might not even turn heel. It might be Randy Orton who turns heel. And it just sets up that match. Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes at Bad Blood. Um, but we have to see what happens. But for now, I'm locking my pick in. I'm picking Cody Rhodes to retain the undisputed WWE Championship against Kevin Owens. Um, so basically, that would do it for our Bash in Berlin prediction video. My name is Bruin Steele. This is Canadian Yorker. Um, and yeah, that would do it, guys. I hope you guys enjoy Bash in Berlin, which is this Saturday. Not sure what time it will be. But yeah, be sure to check it out. So... My name is Bruno Steele, this is Canadian Yorker. If you haven't done so, like, subscribe, check out Canadian Yorker's YouTube channel. Link will be in the description as well as our WWE Wrestling Bros channel. 
which is also the YouTube link will be in the description as well. Um, so before we leave, any last thoughts, Canadian Yorker? Yeah, I, I would say that if Kevin Owens doesn't turn heel on Kevin and Cody Rhodes just yet after after Bash in Berlin, I mean, he could definitely be turning on Cody Rhodes sometime after uh, Bad Blood, probably. I mean, we, you know, we might not get it right, you know, this Saturday, but we might get it sometime in the future, maybe after Randy Orton turns heel. But we'll see. We'll have to see what's going to happen because people, Cody, I mean, Kevin is definitely must be feeling a little jealousy or something. But at the same time, he might not be feeling it right now. But I would say right now, this contract, you know, he, he's never really renewed his contract with WWE. So it's looking like Kevin Owens might be thinking of moving on to a new a new place maybe sometime in the future after Bash in Berlin. So he, he, this might be his last ride to get a WWE championship out of him before he decides to go and leave WWE. That might happen, but we'll have to see what's going to happen between, you know, after Bash and Berlin. All right. So that would do it, guys. Once again, my name is Bruno Steele. This is Kenyon Yorker, and we are out of here, and we'll see you guys in the next broadcast. Have a nice night, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night, and see you guys later. Yep, ta-ta.